So first of all, so um, apologies for the rather busy slide, but let me just talk you through some key industry trends. So we've been building mobile advertising businesses in about 36 different countries now. So we have the Weave experience in the UK, we've been scaling businesses across Asia, US, and, and mainly South America. And, um, and we've been seeing some key things, and, and firstly, technology. So technology developments, and, that, and that's a real shift in the industry. And what they've been doing in, in, in mobile is taking everything from online around segmentation, attribution, targeting, all that good stuff. Secondly, pr programmatic, and you'll hear a lot about programmatic across various industries now, uh, particularly online, particularly mobile. And, and what's happening with programmatic is it's sweeping across the industry. In very, very simple terms, the ability to put the buy and the sell side together in a very economical fashion, which is why agencies and brands and most people like it. And then lastly, um, t technology tools. And what that really means is platforms. And I know you've had one or two platform providers come and talk to you um, here. Um, I think the ability of platforms to weave together different elements of the industry, the opportunity, are going to be essential. So I think technology is going to play an ever-increasing um, role. Secondly, mobile is the fastest channel. So not just in the UK, it's across every region. And uh, that's driven by programmatic, particularly in the US. So programmatic is now forecast to deliver nearly 90% of display advertising in the US by 2017. So if you stand back and think about the volume there, that, that, that's a big number, that's not small. You've got new innovative formats, rich media formats, and things like video arriving in mobile, particularly in Asia. And then lastly, you've got a theme which is around multiple screens. And I want to emphasize the point because I believe that's the opportunity for the out-of-home industry, which is you've got a theme which is emerging. You've got a real need Mobile sits at the center of that, but out of home is pivotal to it. And lastly, I think you've had, you've had Bruce here, right? Yeah. From Twitter. Yeah. Bruce Daisley has been here. So um, I'm sure he's told you that their mobile ad revenues now are actually beyond 84%. Um, that's a big number. And Facebook, which are beyond 80% now. And uh, you might look at that and think, well, you would say that. So that's what they do. If you rewind back two years to Facebook, two years ago, Facebook was 17% of revenues were on that mobile device. So it gives you, you know, a sense of the change and the speed of change. So the mobile advertising growth. I'm not going to go through some of the figures, some of the distribution. You've heard a lot from Nigel, but I'll just, I'll just major on two things here. Firstly, if you look at the global revenue in 2014 at 22 billion, that's forecast to reach 52 billion by 2017. That gives you a sense of the change. And, and when I talk about mobile, try to think about screens rather than a mobile device, because I think that's relevant to everybody here. Secondly, if you look at the formats on the right, so the bottom right shows you the different formats across the different regions. So people get quite um, opinionated around messaging or display or video or whatever. You can see across different regions there are varying formats. Messaging in South America, unlike here in the UK, is huge. It's nearly 70% of all revenue. So they're very different across regions, which is something that I think we just need to think about. And whilst challenging, if you look at the mobile advertising landscape, the, the screens landscape, you've got five things that we've been thinking about. Firstly, the messaging piece that Nigel shared with you, which is how do we leverage that and scale it across different countries? And I know we've quoted some big numbers, but Telefonica's ad numbers now are beyond about 1.4 billion from a base of less than 250 about three years ago. So it gives you a scale of, you know, um, a sense of the scale. Mobile display, driven by programmatic. User data and audience targeting. So I'm going to share a slide with you which shows the way that the telcos think about the industry and the way that the telcos feel that they can unlock new revenue streams. And that's very relevant to everybody in this room. Programmatic technology, that's about ad platforms. Technology layers that live between different forms of media. And lastly, mobile video. So mo the mobile video game, you'll see lots of slides around uh, search and display. So I think search and display in the UK in mobile accounts for around 90%, probably more now. Um, video has yet to play, it's less than 1%. So the video game has yet to be played. And I think um, you've heard it from Nigel, you've probably heard it from a lot of people. That's a game you can enter and it's a game where you can play. 
So this is um, it's a very complicated slide, but I'm just going to try and um, explain it in very simple terms. So the, the, the shift that the telcos are making, so Telefonica, which is a big business, it's um, in 28 countries with networks like O2, and has to move into adjacent markets like advertising. And there's a reason for that. It's driving growth. The core business is flat at best, apart from South America and different pockets of Asia. So the telcos, if you take advertising, they've been on a trajectory here that you can see the bottom piece, the current trajectory. And they're moving into what I would describe as phases one and two, which is in the short term, taking that data and making legacy products better. So in very, very simple terms, mobile messaging, location-based targeting, working with other forms of media. But the second piece is the most interesting piece. And I think the most interesting for everybody in this room, actually, which is, in the longer term, the telcos see their role as a technology provider, leveraging mobile devices and playing a bigger role in the overall advertising ecosystem. So you'll have heard a lot of people talk about measurement. You'll have heard a lot of people talk about um, using mobile devices for targeting, lots of different things. They want to slot themselves within the different advertising ecosystems. You know, targeting with location-based messages is great. It might deliver 750 or a billion. But, but they see the opportunity as much bigger than that, much, much bigger. And why? Well, first of all, if you look at um, the penetration of media platforms, which is the chart on the, on the left, rather busy, but in very, very simple terms, um, all these different forms of media, the time it's taken them to reach 50% consumer adoption, all the way from radio over 30 years, all the way down to social media, you know, in some cases less than two years, actually, um, a mobile sits you know, quite neatly in the middle there. The point there is, around technology, you know, powering different ecosystems, it's shorter now. You don't need to wait 10, 20, 30 years. Technology has changed that. And secondly, um, mobile's created an opportunity for incremental media time. So um, again, in very sim simple terms, from 2000 through to a forecast in 2020, consumers will spend more time with those devices. It will increase media time, which is a good thing. So why out of home and particularly digital out of home? So um, why did the coincidence arrive that um, I booked to come here and I enter the industry? So um, I think first and foremost, the, the, the growth potential of the industry excites me. It reminds me of um, other forms of media um, outside of mobile. Secondly, consumer attitudes. I'll share some stats with you that I'm sure you're all familiar with. That, that you know, I find really interesting, actually, and I think um, show great potential uh, ahead. I think it's quite influential within the media mix. If you think about the media mix and what's happening with consumers, it's become quite influential. Um, and in a, a very, very crowded world of more messages, I think influence is going to be more and more important. Social, mobile, and beyond. So um, you've probably had this um, said to you a thousand times around the potential with social platforms alongside digital out of home and out of home in general and mobile, et cetera. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going to challenge the convention around that because, um, and I'll talk about it towards the end, which is I think we're in danger of um, giving that money away as an industry. Um, and, and I'll share something from the telco industry, which is very similar. Um, so for me, I think social, mobile, and beyond is a huge opportunity. And then the shift from static to interactive, which is engaging and exciting. And um, you know, what I've seen in recent years has been not just groundbreaking. I think it's genuinely you know, starting to deliver something exciting for consumers in the industry. And for me, I think that's really exciting. So the growth opportunity. Um, you probably already know these numbers, but um, outdoor media grew every quarter, 2013. 15 quarters of solid growth. Really good forecast for the future. And then overall, 50% from 2012 and now makes up over 11%. We, we know these figures. For me, I think there's an opportunity to go beyond that. And why do advertisers and agencies get excited about the opportunity? Um, I referenced the consumer piece, and I, I found this chart. I think it's one from Kantar, which talks about um, consumer attitudes towards out of home. Really positive around expectation to see brands there. Distractions welcomed, and distractions are not welcomed in other forms of media. Distractions in mobile are not welcomed. 
I can assure you, I've seen the research, seen it many times, many countries, they're not welcome. More likely to interact with other technology, I think that will increase. Spurs consumers to do things online. Um, I'll share something with you around mobile next, actually, with searches. Likely to pay more attention, and then the local area wouldn't be the same uh, without it. I think it was, at, I wasn't at Ad Week, so I was traveling, but um, I think there was one or two comments around uh, the importance of localization within out of home or digital out of home. Um, you know, for me, I think localization is a huge opportunity um, and can be leveraged, actually. So uh, the story of targeting people in Scarborough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is a threat, but it's an opportunity if you get it right. And then out of home compared to other forms of media um, in terms of stimulating a response. And again, you'll know this stuff, uh, you know, if you marry it against uh, TV, press, other forms of media. The main thing here is um, more mobile searches are generated from out of home ads than any other form of media. Fact. And I think that trend will increase. I think that's going to start to move a lot faster, particularly when things are digitized and they start to become more content driven. And then optimizing mobile's role in the mix delivers better results as well. So you can see an increase in results in terms of things like awareness, purchase intent, various other things. Again, you'll be familiar with this stuff, but it's the stuff that delivers, for me, the real value. And then established relationships between you know, smartphones and digital out of home. So three quarters of urban audiences now have a smart device, which is up by nearly 60% from last year. So you'll see that trend, different in regions, different in South America, different in Asia, but you'll see that trend starting to probably accelerate. And then why are screens becoming pivotal to that kind of backdrop for, um, for out of home and, and media in general? Um, it's where consumers go to research a product, and it wasn't time to kind of put this into the presentation, but we've got a load of stats around um, things like showrooming and consumer behavior within retail, et cetera, et cetera, which for me, again, is a, is a possible extension for this industry and the sector. Um, they look for a product in store, so 28%, again, a trend which is accelerating, and then went to purchase online or offline. So um, and you'll see most people, um, my, my kind of kids laugh when I talk on this thing, because all they do is they just walk around with it and interact with it. Um, and when they go shopping, my eldest is only 13, so she won't buy in a store. She'll search for it in store, and then she'll go home and order it on an iPad. She doesn't even go to a fixed PC. So if you think this stuff is kind of out there, not really relevant, it's hugely relevant to everybody in this room. And then a typical multi-screen user consumes seven hours of screens per day in any five-hour period, which is huge. Huge. If you think about other forms of media, that's huge. And then there's a new era of brand content consumer, uh, consumption, which you'll have probably heard talked about a lot and described as omni-screaming. Again, huge trend. But it's the simultaneous use of screens. So um, it's not one screen, it's about the combination of screens that have become so pivotal in the media landscape. 14% and of consumers are starting to mesh those simultaneous screens. Consumers expect brands to be on multiple screens. They expect to find them all delivering across every single device. It's an expectation. So it's not a, an added benefit. It's not something new. It's an expectation. And screens are pivotal in that world. So six out of 10 responses to an out-of-home ad are online. 55% of 25 to 34-year-olds like the idea of interacting with digital screens. Nearly half of consumers stop and interact with a digital out-of-home ad and 37% of consumers are likely to tweet after seeing an ad or a poster. And then you've got more than half of UK smartphone owners use their phones in stores. Again, growing trend. My 13-year-old does it. You probably do it subconsciously. Over half use their phones whilst out shopping. 54% compare prices. 46% gather more information. 41% take photos of potential buys. I'll photo the product I might buy and 17% of smartphone owners use a mobile device to find something at a better price. 72% say they would be more likely to revisit a store if they were sent a coupon or a promotion, and 73% would be more likely to buy additional products if they received a voucher, coupon, or even other information. And I think the, the key thing here is um, don't get uh, seduced into the mobile piece. The key thing here is it's about screens. It's about screens, it's not about mobile. And then to touch on data, so um, 
Uh, Nigel mentioned this um, around the, the, the whole data piece. And it, the, the key stat for me is 90% of the world's data has been collected in the last two years alone. So you'll hear lots of stats, but for me, that's the key point. And people talk about it being the new oil, but actually, it's redefining the marketing mix and actually becoming the precious resource that sits behind everything. So as an industry sector, that needs to be dealt with, and it needs to be dealt with intelligently before the big guys come in and deal with it. What you've got here on the right is the activity on the rise in terms of the amount of companies investing in big data strategies and moving forward on that front. So you can see the growth. How have we been thinking about that? Um, well, our business is predicated on data from a Telefonica perspective. Um, we're in 14 different adjacent markets. Advertising is just one. So we're in other things, financial services, healthcare, you, so on. Um, this is a screenshot from something called um, Outdoor Media Manager. So, um, and, and the good thing about this is, this is real. So this is a product that exists. It's about 100 yards over that way. And um, it's been developed. It's just not been deployed. So, um, and it's not been deployed due to priorities, uh, due to the business deploying capital into certain areas that, 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 that are better used and, and more relevant and more now. But it does exist. And it gives you the opportunity to look at the O2 base in the UK. Um, if you include the, um, the MVNOs as well, it's about 26.4 million. It gives you an opportunity to um, drop in the sites, whether they're digital um, or traditional or whatever. And then you can measure audiences in real time. So you can plot people moving around. Um, and I think I've seen this a few times, and I know um, PosterScope and various other players have been uh, leveraging different opportunities in the sector. This is a very real one that exists now with a 26 million base. And uh, you know, I've seen those developments that Nigel talked about all the way down to uh, Root. And um, fantastic developments, but this gives you a sense of what's possible and probably what we need to think about. Um, and then Telefonica, um, having launched into every form of media, so big online businesses, loyalty businesses, and everything else, um, launched into the out-of-home business about 18 months ago, um, mainly out of Madrid, with a business called On The Spot. Um, and they specialize in activating uh, points of sale. Um, they have metrics and tools like Outdoor Media Manager that sit behind their products, um, audio visual, and a really great advertising channel across seven countries, which is in excess of about 100 million. So it's not huge, um, but it's a pretty good business within two years. And I think it, it gives you a sense of the, the previous slide, which is how real is that? It's very real. So they're leveraging that across um, South America, primarily, uh, and Spain, but going very, very well. And the telcos understand how they can unlock the opportunity within the ad space. So first of all, audience measurement. and, and, and consolidating that position and making it consistent across different pockets of the industry. Introduction of real-time buying, tracking, and optimization. So um, I know people talk about programmatic, and you'll hear them talking about it in, in, in the industry, and you probably walk away thinking, well, that's all great, and yeah, we'll, but we'll get back to the day job. And, and programmatic is going to arrive, so it will arrive. <laughs> and um, I think I was asked, from someone at Kinetic who said to me, what do you think about the industry, the out-of-home industry, and what will happen? And I said, well, if they don't adopt, adopt it and embrace it, then you'll be dragged kicking and screaming into that world, full stop. They can deliver better targeting. They can merge advertising and payments. So you'll have seen different um, executions of payments in out-of-home, particularly in Asia. Um, the telcos have the ability to do that. They can do it. And lastly, they can create better consumer experiences across screens. They have the ability to gel all those screens together with data. Because the big issue in mobile, and no one talks about it, is first-party data. It's a big issue. But the industry needs to recognize that, um, unfortunately, you, you've all got to work together, and probably with a lot more people in the industry. And uh, um, I'm just starting to put my foot into the business. Um, and... Uh, my sense is I'm not quite sure we're working together, actually. Um, so it's not a great message, but um, we need to work together because the, the competitive set has completely changed. The competitive set is not your brother in this room. Your competitive set is Google. It's Facebook. It's Bruce. They're the competitive set, and it's changed. 
And then when you look at Bruce, Google, Twitter, Facebook, I look at the amplification of out-of-home campaigns. And I look at some of the numbers that have been delivered. That's not their revenue. That's not their revenue. So you'll sit there and you'll think, ah, oh, mobile man. Easy for you to say. It's not their revenue. And this has happened in the telco industry. Google is a business model predicated on Telefonica's networks in over 30 countries, actually. They don't pay to upgrade the network. In the UK, we invest over two million pounds per day on the network. So when you drop a call, when something happens, that's a load of people trying to upgrade it between 3G and 4G. What do Google pay towards that? Nothing. Not a penny. Not a single dime. And you're in danger of letting that opportunity go. It's not their money. It's not their activation. It's not their opportunity. And I think what the industry needs to think about is how do we deal with that intelligently? And if you want to give away the pie, fine. I don't want to give away the pie. I'll share the pie, but I ain't giving the pie away. So some closing thoughts. I think a huge growth opportunity. I like growth opportunities. I like sectors that go through change. I like challenges, which is why I'm heading where I'm heading. The digital transition adds value. Most forms of media, if you look at most forms of media, and I've been blessed with working in virtually every one, they destroy value through a transition. They destroy value. Newspapers talk a lot about their at the tipping point, which is a reader of their website is worth the same as the newspaper. That's rubbish. That's absolute rubbish. They're destroying value through the transition. This industry has an opportunity to add value through that transition. It has unique benefits and relevancy. When I talk to advertisers, agencies, specialists, every, everybody out there, people are genuinely excited about what's happening. This is becoming really relevant, really exciting. Technology, mobile, search, social, they can all add value to what we're doing. And data can be leveraged. And lastly, everybody is genuinely excited. It's a sort of tipping point, actually, um, if we get it right. However, it's not going to be another Google bashing. Industry needs a plan. So, um, and I saw this in, less so in TV, but more in radio in the UK. The industry needed a plan, otherwise they were never going to grow. In sector battles versus the war, the war is out there. The war is out there with the Google and everybody else. It's not about battling with each other for sites. Or what I see as, I see them more as skirmishes across the industry. That's about working together. There needs to be consistency around accountability, measurement, platforms, that sort of thing. And then fishing in new ponds. So um, I've seen Google sit by and watch the telcos invest billions, billions. I don't think that should happen in this area. I, I really don't. And I think there's a screen party. So if you think about screens connected across different devices and opportunities, and we can sit at the center of that, I, I think we deserve to be at that party. But I, I actually think that we can start calling the shots more at that party, actually. And lastly, um, one of my big frustrations, and uh, I think I upset uh, the, the journalist that um, we talked to on my announcement of my move. And uh, she said, so, so. Um, out of home. I said, it's not out of home. Will you stop calling it out of home? It's engagement. It's consumer engagement and consumers on the move. And you tell me any other form of media that has the ability to do that and then pull all the different screens together. So I think it needs to move. It needs to be an evolution um, into engagement. And then lastly, I think the opportunity is you're either on the right, which is you're intrigued by screens, you're intrigued by the possibilities, you're intrigued about the challenge to work together, and you can clearly see who the competition is. That, for me, is exciting. Well, you're on the left, which is, this is just too big a thing. It's too complicated. It's too difficult. And for me, I'm firmly over there. This is my youngest, by the way. And uh, <laughs> I'm firmly over there because I think there's a unique opportunity and a great one to take some you know, real steps forward 
as an industry and compete at the top table. Thank you. <laughs>